Getting into space is really tough because the Earth doesn't want us to leave. It has this gravity that pulls everything down. The further you want to get off the Earth, the more energy you have to have down low to lift yourself up. Historically, there's two ways to get to this 40, 50, 60,000 foot energy point. One is with airplanes, and we see that every day. And now we're starting to see on a very frequent basis, rockets. When you want to fly people into space every day, the airplane has an advantage because airplanes fly every day. Airplanes have been flying for now over 120 years. We understand their operation, their engineering, the efficiencies associated with it. The biggest benefit of using an aircraft as our first stage is reusability. And so the airplane makes an ideal choice for the Virgin Galactic mission. What makes our launch vehicle so cool is the amount of weight that it lifts to altitude. Lifting a 30,000 pound spaceship to 45,000 feet is not an easy thing to do. It results in a unique airplane design. My name is Steve Justice. I recently retired as the Senior Vice President of Programs and Engineering here at Virgin Galactic. I'm now a Senior Advisor for their launch vehicle programs. Over the course of my career, I've had to work on a number of high altitude, long endurance airplanes. And one of the attributes they always have are long straight wings. Long straight wings are great for making a lot of lift at altitude. As we go higher and higher, the air gets thinner and thinner. And so the wing has to work very hard to get to altitude. We have a pretty draggy spaceship that we carry to altitude. And so we need a lot of thrust. We selected Pratt & Whitney engines that are very efficient in fuel and are cleared to fly at very high altitudes. They're also extremely reliable and the four engines provide the thrust that's necessary to get us to that release point. High altitude aircraft have a payload weight that's extremely lightweight. Even airliners have a payload weight that's only 30 to 40 percent of the weight of the aircraft without fuel. Our launch vehicle lifts a spaceship that weighs as much as the launch vehicle. Our launch vehicle is basically bench pressing its own weight and it carries that weight to a very high altitude. One of the things you notice when you look at our launch vehicle is the twin fuselages with the spaceship in the middle. If you've got to carry a very heavy weight, you carry it as close as you can to your body and right in front of you on the center. That way, when you release that weight, your body doesn't shift. It means that when we release the spaceship, the launch vehicle itself doesn't pitch or roll, and we get a very clean and safe separation between the spaceship and launch vehicle. My name is Dan Alex. I'm one of the test pilots here at uh, Virgin Galactic. In the EVE pilot, to release the spaceship is really cool. You're basically focused on lining up at the drop point. EVE is great to fly when you get to altitude. It really handles well, and so it's lining up is, is very easy. You get into the countdown, and you do the final three, two, one, press the release button, and you feel the spaceship drop away. EVE pitches up uh, about two Gs, and it feels like a little bit of a roller coaster ride. And then, of course, the best part is you get an amazing view of the rocket as it goes up into space. There she goes. Nice. With the recent upgrades we've done to EVE, it means we can now fly EVE three to four times a week. That means we take people to space three to four times a week. I'm Pedro Caballero. I'm the Vice President of Maintenance Operations, Virgin Galactic. We're comfortable that EVE's gonna be able to support at least three flights a week. And so we're talking being able to come back from a spaceship flight, go through a post-flight inspection, and then prepare for the next spaceship that same day, and then fly the next day with the next spaceship. I'm Mike Masucci. I'm a lead pilot trainer here at Virgin Galactic. We upgraded the uh, trim systems on the aircraft. We updated some of the avionics on the aircraft. We did some structural mods on the aircraft that allow us to go farther between inspections. The team did an amazing job preparing her over the last year for its future role of carrying our Delta spaceships. We have a first stage that is low cost, operates safely, is very reliable, and that reliability means that we can reuse the system turn it very quickly, and we can fly it thousands of times. My name is Daniele Lamboglia. I'm the chief engineer for the uh, next launch vehicle. Our launch vehicle has unique capabilities in terms of high altitude operation, 
heavy uh, payload lifting and uh, for a long period of time at low speed. All these capabilities open to uh, additional opportunity in terms of variety of missions, which include sensor development, environmental testing, as well as used as a platform for launching hypersonic vehicles. We offer low-cost alternative platform for this type of testing. We would like also to offer services for alternative missions to potential customers. The flexibility of uh, our pylon, that, where we can customize the attachment configuration, for custom designed payload. In addition to that, we offer also space in the cabin for a test engineer or research engineer for onboard collecting and analyzing the data. Going slower allows for a more stable aerodynamic where there are no shock waves or other phenomena that will create vibration or instability in the flow. This is particularly important for the development of certain type of sensors that have these requirements. The unique design and configuration of our launch vehicle means that we can carry payload weights up to 35,000 pounds on the launch pylon. It means that we can also have the capability to reach above 50,000 feet. With the high efficiency of the wing and engines, we can reach endurance times exceeding 10 hours. It gives us the opportunity then to find that perfect test point, that right combination of altitude, endurance, and payload weight for the particular test or mission we want to go fly. Eve's ability to carry heavy payloads up to high altitudes, long flight endurance, and stable platform sets it apart. When you take off, the climb is awesome. I've flown a lot of fighter jets. It's almost like a fighter jet has a ton of power, especially when we're lightweight, they're not carrying a spaceship, and you're going up like 30 degrees nose high, 150 knots. It's almost like you're in a rocket ship. You're just, you're going way up, and then eventually get all the way up above 50,000 feet. Without a spaceship attached, EVE has amazing climb performance. Its wing is bigger than that of many airliners, and yet it's a fraction of the weight. So from takeoff to 50,000 feet takes well under 20 minutes. I've been above 50,000 feet in other aircraft, and it took much, much longer to get there. When you're that high above 50,000 feet, you, you start seeing the curvature of the Earth, you see the dark sky. It's just a beautiful uh, sight to see from our launch vehicle. Flying up above 50,000 feet was such a unique experience. The sky was so much darker and so much bluer than where you fly in a commercial airliner. It's built really to be up high like that, so the control forces are nicely tuned. You don't need a lot of power in this configuration without a spaceship to hang out up there, and it just sips gas, so it's very low fuel flow, and you could probably just stay there all day. <laughs> And I'm really looking forward to strapping a Delta spaceship onto this uh, carrier vehicle and bringing it over the beautiful skies of New Mexico and sending it off into space. That'll just be a great day for us.